I go for eight. I think I'm, I'm with it. I think I have everything. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Thank you.
children of the Most High God. It is with joy that we gather this evening and it feels like the writer of the 95th Psalm is in this place because those words, those ancient words, hold power for us today. Oh come, let us sing before the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to our God with songs of praise. Oh come, let us bow down before him. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker, for he is our God and we are his people and the sheep of his land. It's a joyful day, so come. Come on and join me in a word of prayer. Oh God, we come with songs of praises in our mouths and hallelujahs on our lips. We come to welcome God, these 11 whom you chose and now Alfred Street Baptist Church comes to affirm, come, come Holy Spirit. You've chosen them, you've instructed them, you've equipped them. And we follow in the tradition of your apostles of old because you told them to appoint deacons to serve the needs of your people. So in obedience, these have presented themselves before you. Now God, now God. Through them, won't you extend the work of the kingdom? By them, won't you increase the kinship of brothers and sisters? And with them, won't you show others the way to come into your presence, to love you and to receive you and to accept you, that your kingdom indeed might come on earth as in heaven? Yes, God, you've set them apart. Now, God, walk with them, operate in them, and bless others through them. We consecrate them tonight to your service, Lord. Yes. And we do the same with the entire priesthood of believers. Guide us, God, that your word and will and way may be known. We pray this in the name of your Son and our Savior. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And all God's children together said, Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, won't you turn in your hymnals to hymn number 358. I am thine, O Lord. Long to rise in 
8 through 16 in the New King James Version. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Chairperson Monterio, I present on behalf of the training team and myself, the following persons as candidates to be ordained. They have studied even in the virtual world and completed in-depth training in preparation as servant leaders here at Alfred Street Baptist Church. I will call their name, they will stand, and remain standing until all names have been called. Please hold your applause until we get to the end of the list. Thank you. James C. Carroll III, James Edward Clements, Jr., Jimmy L. Edwards, Jr., Allison Marie Hilliard, Bernard Jackson, Karen Gibson Jenkins, Hope Ellen Kent, Jacqueline Marie Parham, Lorraine Natasha Phelps, Wanda A. Smith, and Aaron Robert Watson. Give them a round of applause. You may turn around. by the criteria set forth in the scriptures, who by election of this congregation, and who by their own consent are ready to serve God, ready to promote Jesus Christ as the way to salvation, and ready to assist you in caring for the flock as deacons of Alpha Street Baptist Church.
you lead the way I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say But this life you gave is not my own I'm trusting you to hear my yes and lead me Lord, my life, my life is yours, and there is peace when I say yes, I might not see it now, but you save the best for all who try. I've been raised in church. I can probably count on one hand the number of Sundays my parents allowed us to stay home and not be in worship on the weekend. And never before have the words of the psalmist meant so much to me as tonight. We said it was good. And I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you know that you've missed just being on holy ground, 
And in this space where we've come to worship God, it is good to be back in church, even if just for a little moment. And there's no greater occasion that calls us than the opportunity we have now to consecrate those whom the Lord has called into the great service of being a deacon. Would you bow with me in prayer as we search and seek for the voice and the will of God? Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we sure enough are glad and rejoicing in it. Thank you, God, for allowing our feet to dwell on holy ground. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to make public our praise, to shout for joy with all the grace and mercy you've bestowed upon us. We come now, O oh God, grateful for these 11 whom you shaped in their mother's womb and ordained this day, January 15th, 2022, where they would begin their formal service as a deacon. Thank you, God, that time has caught up with providence. And now we stand in this moment to make glorious the name of Jesus. In the precious and perfect name of he who was and is and is to come, we do pray. And the redeemed of God said amen. amen. I want to, in this first time of preaching from this pulpit in almost two years, share in a public private conversation with these 11 and invite the rest of you to eavesdrop on what I need to say. This ain't for you. It's for them. I want to begin by adding my name and my voice to the long list of those who congratulate you and celebrate this moment. This moment where we acknowledge God's call on your life, where you've had enough wisdom to say yes, where you've dedicated yourself through months of preparation and training, and we celebrate what God has ordained. In just a few moments, the tradition of what we see in Bible, we're going to lay hands on you. And in the laying on of hands, we're gonna bestow upon you a new name and a new title. It's a name and a title that fewer than 0.1% of the members of this church will ever bear. It is a name and a title that resounds with reverence and respect, especially in the halls of a Baptist church. It's a name that you don't know now, but will become the permanent moniker of your life. You don't have the ability to take it on and off when you want to. You're no longer Wanda, you're Deacon Smith. You're no longer Jimmy, you're Deacon Edwards. You're not Jackie anymore, you're Deacon Parham on aisle seven in Giant. You are Deacon Parham. And you're not only Dr. Hilliard, you're now Deacon Dr. Hilliard. Who would have ever thought that that title would supersede the years of medical training? But now you're a deacon. We're adding you to the list of some names that we utter in this space with deference and even a bit of veneration. Names like Pompey Jackson and Will Willis. James Johnson and Pat Johnson. Your name is on the list with Frank Hurd and Welton Quander and Francis Crawford. We mention you with the likes of Leo Brooks and Barbara Keller and Bob Bogan. You now sit in a room with James Garrett, Tom and V. Howe, Pat and Al Wallace. We lift you up with the names of a Richard Ware 
and a Mary wear. Those are names that hold reverence in this place. We can't tell the story of Alfred Street without those names. And prayerfully, one day, your name will be mentioned with the same respect. We're giving you a name that is above all names. And as we prepare to ordain you with that title and that name, I want to reread in your hearing a passage of scripture that you better be well familiar with. It's a passage of the calling of the first seven deacons in Bible. It comes to us in the book of Acts chapter 6. You know it well. I reread it in your hearing. In the sixth chapter of Acts, the New International Version reads as follows. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked and the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. You've heard that passage before. As we hear it again tonight, I want to ask a question. What's in a name? What's in a name? The book of Acts is critical for understanding, diagnosing, and even operating within the church. For you see, Lisa, it is more than just a book of history of how the church was founded. But it's a book that shares with us how a group of fledgling followers of Jesus Christ endeavored to spread the good news of their Savior's death and resurrection and lay the foundation for what we now still worship in that we call the church. Beloved, don't take for granted their task. It was not simple. Emmett, they had to take a movement and turn it into a community. They had to find a way to maintain order and unity in the midst of controversy and contention. They had to learn to deal with difficult and divisive personalities that were searching for power and position. They had to deal with the pressure of persecution and build something that would stand the test of time. They had to navigate their way through doctrinal division and debate what was true and untrue that they might teach what we now know as orthodox doctrine. And above all, they had to make certain that they prioritize the proclamation of the death and resurrection of Jesus as God's only answer for humanity's sin problem. In order to achieve that task, there were some things and some people they really needed. They needed an understanding of their purpose and their calling and their assignment. What were they supposed to do? And they got that from Jesus in chapter 1 when he told them, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the world. Russell, they had to replace Judas who had betrayed Jesus and subsequently taken his own life. And they did that in the first vote of the church in electing a brother named Matthias. They needed some strength to carry out this assignment that God had given them. And they found that in the power and the person of the Holy Spirit that descended upon them on the day of Pentecost. They needed some strong leadership. They found that in Peter. 
who stood up boldly preaching Jesus Christ in the face of the high priests and the Sanhedrin council. They needed financial resources because church requires money. And they found that when all the believers came together, and the Bible says that they held all things in common. They had to deal with some difficulties of Ananias and Sapphira who held back what God had given them and did not want to fully commit. And they had to let them know you have no part in this because sometimes you have to exclude people from the work of God. They needed some inside help. They got it from the Pharisee Gamaliel who stood in front of the whole council and said, listen, leave these folk alone because if God is with them, you can't stop them. If God isn't with them, it will die of its own. But if the hand of God is on it, you cannot stop what God has ordained. Mark's things seemed to be going well. And then they ran up on a problem that they did not foresee. The problem was that there were some widows in this family of faith. Women without the covering and the resource and the protection of husband in those days. And they were dependent upon the church taking care of them. But the disciples, the apostles were so busy in studying the word and proclaiming the word that they could not take themselves away from study in order to take care of the widows. And they realized that this problem was an embarrassment to the church. How can you all claim to be the people of God and your own folk are hungry in your own church? They realized it was a problem that had to be solved. So they gathered the church together and the apostles humbled themselves and said, we need some help. We can't do all this by ourselves. We need someone to help carry the load, to ease the burden. And you all know that that's where deacons began. With a problem that had to be solved. I think I need to just stop right here and remind you that deacons were created to solve problems. not create them. That the calling upon the deacon was not to make it worse, but to find a way to put it to rest. The deacons at their core are problem solvers, not problem starters. We are fixers, not fighters. And too often our churches are torn apart by those who get this name and this title and confuse what their purpose is. They get in these positions and sit in boardrooms and are revered and cause more problems than they solve. But Bernard, we're not always going to get along. Aaron, there are going to be some differences of opinion. Jackie, the meetings get hot every now and then. But the work of a deacon is to make certain that we don't leave this room until this problem has been solved. That we don't stop until the debate is not divisive. That we don't quit until the unity of the church is preserved. That the issue is put to rest that we are calling you to help solve problems in the church. These seven are chosen and the apostles lay hands on them and they're called deacons. What's in that name? What does it mean to be a deacon? Well, you all may know what your family doesn't know, so I'll say it publicly. The word deacon in the Greek The Bible is this word diakonos, delta, iota, alpha, kappa, omicron, nu, omicron, sigma, D-I-A-K-O-N-O-S, diakonos. And the correct translation of diakonos is servant. We, We are laying hands on you and giving you the permanent title, servant. 
Not president. Servant. Not chairperson. Servant. Not HNIC. But servant. And may I suggest to you that what this church needs is what every church needs? Some servants. Hope we got a whole lot of, if it ain't my way, it's the highway. We got enough of that. We're filled to the raptors with I'm right and you're wrong. We got a whole lot of, if I ain't in charge, then I'm not going to volunteer. We have a whole lot of, I need to run the show and I need to handle the meeting. What we really need are some servants. Barbara, it seems to me that the first quality of servanthood, the first thing that's in that name is humility. Humility, that lowering of your pride in favor of someone else. Humility, that taking an L for the greater good. That humility, using your energy to make someone look better than you make yourself look. That humility of doing it for free and not sending the church an invoice or expecting to be paid for every little thing you do. That humility of staying after the benediction and cleaning up because everybody else went home. That humility is what we need. And even in a church with more than 10,000 members, we're awful short on some servants. Everybody wants something. And nobody wants to serve. Well, we're ordaining you as diakonos. Can, can I teach the Bible for a little bit? In, in the Bible, there, there are two separate Greek words that are oftentimes confused because they're translated the same in English. They're translated as servant, but they're really two different words in the Greek New Testament. Let me teach you what they are. One is diakonos, and the other is doulos. There's diakonos and there's doulos. Diakonos is servant. Doulos is slave. Doulos is the metaphor Paul uses when he speaks about our relationship with Jesus. He says, I am a doulos. We are douloi of Jesus. We are slaves to Jesus. But we are not ordaining you doulos. We're ordaining you diakonos. What does that mean? You're not being ordained a slave of Alfred Street. You're being ordained a servant of Alfred Street. And since I know we're too far removed, let me make certain you know the difference between servant and slave. Slave can't say no. Slave has no will of their own. Slave operates 24-7. Slave loses family for what their master tells them they have to be. That's what a slave is. But God has not called you to slavery in Alfred Street Baptist Church. Which means this, don't get it confused. Your faithfulness is not found in never saying no. Your faithfulness is not found in never resting. Your faithfulness is not found in signing up and volunteering for everything and everything and everything and everything. There comes a moment when you've got to prove you're not a slave by choosing to rest. By choosing to say no. Don't you lose your family because you're a diakonos. Don't you miss her birthday because you're diakonos. Don't neglect your health because you're diakonos. Don't miss the anniversary because you're diakonos. Every now and then, even the servant has to say no to prove we're not a slave. You're diakonos. Now, now what really may, can mess you up is, is to see where else diakonos shows up in Scripture. It's not just with these seven that are called, not just with you all the servants. Paul uses the word diakonos 20 times in the New Testament. 
Four times, it's translated as servant. 16 times, it's translated as minister. When Paul uses diaconos, he says minister. You remember when he's talking to the Corinthian church who is split between Paul and Apollos and he asked the question, who is Paul and who is Apollos? But they are ministers of God. The word he uses there is diakonos. The diakonos is also the term for minister. Now that messes us good Baptist folk up. Because in the Baptist church, we reserve minister for those that stand behind the microphone and preach the word. We reserve deacons for those that sit on the front pew and go to sleep. That's the role that we serve. But in scripture, minister and diakonos are the same. As a matter of fact, that's what will mess you up. If you go to an AME church, you'll find that when they ordain people as ministers, they're ordained as deacons. And so in the AME church, if you're ordained as a deacon, you are a preacher of God's word. What the Baptist world needs to remember is simply this, that minister and deacon are both servants. At the end of the day, we are both servants. Whether you stand in this pulpit or sit on that pew, we are all servants. We are on the same team. We serve the same God. We're trying to achieve the same purpose. And church would be a better place if there were no contention and envy and jealousy between the pulpit and the first pew. Because all of us recognize that we are servants of Jesus Christ. This ain't my church. It ain't your church. It's the church of Jesus. And we are called to be servants I am not your enemy and you are no threat to my call we've been called to serve together for this season that God has seen fit we are servants diakonos but Judy, that word diakonos in Greek, I know you're Hebrew, so I'm going to help you in Greek. <laughs> it, it, it is a particular kind of servant. The word diakonos, servant, is more appropriate, understood from the term of food service. Because remember, they were called to serve the widows. Diakonos, servant, is best understood as waiter, wait staff. You know what makes a good waiter? They're in tune with their diners. You know what makes a good waiter? They're attentive to what's happening at the table. They anticipate need before it's raised. They see water cups getting low and they go and refill them without having to be asked. They, they see crumbs on the table and they go and they sweep and wipe them up. They realize that, that you may want some extra and they bring it out to you. They, they hear your request and they seek to fill it that a good waiter cares about what's happening to those whom he or she is serving. That's your assignment as a deacon. To serve the members of this church, to be attuned and attentive to their needs and their wants, to bring some prayer to the table when they're sick, to bring some presence to the hospital room when they need someone there, to pick up the phone and call and check on them when they're hungering for some attention and compassion. I come by and tell you, everybody can't be a waiter. A dining experience just flashed through your mind. <laughs> you know, over at the National Harbor, there was a restaurant over there a little while ago called Granite City. Granite City and National Harbor, Emmett was one of the most popular restaurants in the harbor. Packed from window to wall all day long. They had the best wings in Oxon Hill. Trust me, I know. 
Granite City had good food. Granite City had a crowd. But right now, its doors are closed. Now, before you think it's COVID-related, no, Granite City shut down before COVID. And I was speaking to a store owner the other day down in Oxon Hill at the National Harbor, and I said, why did Granite City close? They had such good food. They were packed from the window to the wall. They had the best wings in Oxon Hill. With that kind of food and that kind of crowd, you would think it'd still be open. And this was said, they found out some of the waiters were doing some nasty things. The waiters at Granite City were known to cuss you out. They found one waiter spitting in someone's water. And they had to close it down. Now remember, it's packed from the window to the wall. They've got good food. They've got the best wings in Oxon Hill. But because their wait staff was nasty, because those who were called to serve didn't do it with joy and with love because they didn't represent the commodity of the restaurant they were working in. They had to shut the doors and close it down. I don't care how good the food is. It doesn't matter how strong the preacher is. It doesn't matter how big the church is and how many services they have, if those who are ordained to serve cannot do so with love and joy and the spirit of Christ in their heart, we'll shut down. It's not the preaching that keeps this church open. It's the serving. Everybody can't be a waiter. If your attitude is bad, you can't be a waiter. If your fuse is short, you can't be a waiter. If you don't like people, don't be a waiter. If your mouth is nasty, don't be a waiter. If you ask a waiter why they put up with rude clients, most of them will tell you, because I know I represent the owner. You represent the owner of the church. You represent the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And if folk can't see Jesus in you, We're about to shut down. Waiters are attentive. But, but it gets a little worse, and I know you're not going to like this part. Waiters also clean up the mess that the diners have made. It's going to get real quiet right here, real, real quiet. Diaconos are proficient at cleaning up mess. This is where the assignment loses some joy. This is the fine print Grace didn't tell you about. This is the part of the job we held to the end. But we're ordaining you to clean up some mess. I know you don't know this, but church can get... I'm preaching, y'all let me, a church can get messy. And as much as we don't like it, someone's got to clean up the mess. Someone has to force the ministry directors to follow the protocol and policies of the church. Someone's got to remind the directors, you can't just do your own thing. Somebody's got to go to their members and remind them of Matthew 18, 15, that if you got a problem with him and you told someone other than him, you are out of order. Someone's got to go and grab a member and say, have you prayed about this first? Someone's got to be the one to step up and unfortunately make a decision that he or she is not fit for this family. 
someone has to apologize to others on behalf of folk that won't. I've said this to every DIT class, and I get in trouble when I do, so I might as well say it to you. Somebody's got to do the dirty work. Somebody's got to take the garbage out. Somebody's got to wash the dishes. Somebody has to have the difficult conversations that most folk would rather avoid. But whatever you avoid gets worse. You need to write that one down. Avoidance never makes it better. It makes it worse. And every church is in need of some men and women of integrity and word and prayer who we can send into a messy situation and know that they will go in and clean it up. You're being ordained to clean up some mess. You're being ordained to keep Alfred Street Baptist Church spiritually clean. To make certain some things don't get in these pews. Some teachings don't emanate through the membership. Some contention doesn't grow out of hand. Some ugly doesn't become contagious. You're here to do some of the dirty work. You're a diaconos. You're a servant. You're a waiter. But before you take that analogy too far, let me tell you that there's one area that makes you different than waiters you see in the world. Waiters you see in the world in food service today, they work for tips. They want visible signs of appreciation that they've done a good job. They want someone at the table to say he was so good or she was so good, let's leave him a little something extra. And, and when waiters don't get tips, they question whether this is their calling. When waiters don't get tips, they quit and resign and throw in the towel. When waiters don't get tips, they don't want to serve anymore. We don't work for tips. The minute the devil knows you need a tip, he'll make sure you never get it. We don't do this for visible applause and appreciation. We don't do this for acknowledgement and recognition. We don't do this for our name to get on a plaque or a room in the building to be named after you or a ministry to bear your name or you become emeritus. If that's why you're here, quit now. We serve for one reason only. We serve to hear some words spoken at the end of our service that cannot come from anyone's hand, but only from the mouth of God. We serve that when it's all over, when we're done, when they bury us, and we stand before God, that God will look at us and simply say, well done. If that ain't enough for you, quit now. If you need anything more than that, quit now. If that's not enough to make you go through the hell you're about to go through, quit now. But if hearing God say, well done, it's enough for you. Welcome to this call. What's in that name? Servanthood. What's in that name? Humility. What's in that name? Preserving the unity of the church. What's in that name? Caring about people's needs. Cleaning up messes and seeking the approval of the Father. And the same way they laid their hands on those seven, we now prepare to lay our hands on you to give you a new name and a new title. Diakonos, Deacon of Alfred Street Baptist Church. We're gonna lay hands on you in a different way preserving the protection and safety of COVID. 
I'm going to come, put my mask on, and lay hands on you. Dr. Judy's going to pray. And we'd ask that those, especially our deacons who are present, if you would just stand and extend your hand towards the altar, that we might prepare to ordain these 11 with their new name and their new title. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we come before you this evening with grateful hearts. First and foremost for your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who took on the form of a servant and humbled himself and became obedient, obedient unto death, even death on a cross. We thank you for Christ's clear, and consistent example of being in this world and not of this world. How he walked with humility and sacrifice and obedience and grace. And we thank you tonight, God, for those who have responded to your call to follow Christ in this way. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will fill James, James, Jimmy, Allison, Bernard, Karen, Hope, Jacqueline, Lorraine, Wanda, and Aaron, so that each one may obediently serve and bring your kingdom on this earth. And now, God, we pray over them and ask that you will make them deacons in this branch of Zion. Empower them, God, by your spirit so that they will live lives of discipline shaped by prayer and studying your word. We ask God that they will have hearts that hunger and thirst after you, that they will be quick to encourage and listen and slow to judge. We pray God that as they serve as your hands and feet, that each of them will find places and times of rest and restoration. Remembering, God, that you've called them to sacrifice and not to martyrdom. Realizing they cannot serve you well if they are not well themselves. Lord, we ask that you will surround them with wise and good friends and companions. That they will honor time with family and friends. And finally, God, we ask on this day and every day that they will be living testimonies to the redemptive and restorative work of Christ in this world. Use these servant deacons as wounded healers. Make them, God, make them perfectly imperfect examples, examples of the power of Christ in this world, because we need you in this world, God. We need these deacons. So empower them to do the work before them in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
as these deacons have responsibility to the church, the church also, we also have a responsibility to these deacons. Yes, Members of Alpha Street, if you are able, please stand. Our obligation to these deacons, threefold, to pray for them, to encourage them, to follow them. The New Testament church was birthed out of prayer. And the best thing we can do for these deacons is to pray for them. We believe that prayer does something in us. Prayer does something with us. Prayer does something through us. And prayer does something with us. Alpha Street, I charge us to pray for these deacons. I also charge us, Alpha Street, to encourage these deacons. As an extension of the pastoral ministry, it is not an easy task to deal with us. And as servants of God, together, I ask all of us to encourage them because in doing so, we empower them to carry out the work that God has called them to do. I therefore charge us, Alfred Street, to encourage these deacons. Finally, I charge us, Alpha Street, to follow their leadership. As we know, usually they are our first point of contact. They have access, they have information that we don't have. So as they follow the leadership of Pastor Wesley, who follows the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I charge us to follow the leadership of these deacons. And in doing so, this community will thrive as a united body of Christ. I charge you to pray for, to encourage, and to follow these deacons. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, 11, you have answered God's call to serve him as a deacon of Alpha Street Baptist Church. And because you have, you have a charge to fulfill. Deacon Kevin earlier read from Paul's first letter to Timothy. That letter sought to explain the office of deacon, an office as pastor preached that originated in the servant philosophy which Christ held for his mission. Your role echoes that model, and this is your charge. First, you're charged to love Jesus. Yes. We expect you to show your love for Jesus by striving every day to be more and more like him in your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Devote yourselves to daily prayer and Bible study, to private and public worship. In the years to come, you'll be asked to help the hurting, minister to the sick, and counsel those who need direction in life, tasks that at times will seem impossible. But learn to instinctively look to him for strength insight and wisdom, because if you do, you will be sustained. So I charge you to make it your goal to grow spiritually. Second, you're charged to allow Jesus to lead you. Paul says that deacons should be honorable, worthy of respect, people of high principle. 
Your dignity, your dignity should be evident in your conduct. Jesus should be the center and focus of your life. As pastor said, servants are not seekers of attention. They are not pursuing center stage. Instead, deacons are genuine, willing to assist, wanting to help, and availing themselves to the Lord's work. You should seek the model, the servant role of Jesus. That should be your goal. The question should not be, what would please the most people? Or even, how did our predecessors do it? Instead, I encourage you to remember the four letters WWJD and ask the simple question, what would Jesus do? Third, you're charged with loving his church. As servant leaders, we expect you to love and cherish our Alfred Street family. You are charged with preserving the unity we enjoy. This may very well be the most important thing you do. Unity, our solidarity, is why this church is critical, or in this church, is critical to our healthy and growing congregation. It's one of the reasons our church continues to grow and is, be and is hold on, one of the reasons our church continues to grow is because we are unified by the Spirit. Those that worship with us feel that unity. They join our family because they wanna be a part of that love. As deacons, we are charged to preserve just that. So you are charged to love Jesus, to allow Jesus to lead you, to love his church, and finally you are charged to love as he would. As a deacon, you must be open to being led by the Holy Spirit and willing to share the gospel. Today, you are being given tasks such as serving communion, assisting with the baptizing of confessed believers, and distributing benevolence. You will do so in several ways, including serving the families of your discipleship groups. Get to know your families. Make yourself available to them. Do your best to make sure we as a church are taking care of one another. With those things said, you are hereby duly charged to love Jesus, to allow Jesus to lead you, to love his church, and to love as he would. On behalf of the deacons of Alpha Street Baptist Church, both those sitting behind you and those supporting you virtually, I am honored that you will now be counted among our ministry and part of our great heritage at Alpha Street Baptist Church. It is our honor to now have you serve as a deacon of this great church. Welcome to the diaconate of Alpha Street Baptist Church and be the servant leader you have been called to be. Praise the Lord. It is my honor to bring attention to the tools of a deacon that we are going to be providing to you, to each of you today. And they include a badge, a Bible, white gloves, a communion set contact cards, and your ordination certificate. And bear with me for a second as I speak briefly about them. First, the name badge. The initial pinning of this deacon name badge will symbolize that the training is over.
Afterwards, let the badge be a signal to others that you're available to them by name. And I like to encourage you to see that same name badge as a symbol of your determination to know those whom you will serve by their names. We're going to return to the badge shortly. Next is a new and personal Bible. This personal Bible gift suggests to you that even though your initial training is over, that Bible training must continue. And this isn't training that someone else is going to schedule for you. You'll need to be disciplined to design your own personal Bible training time. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 reads that scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. Therefore, as you enter into a new phase of Bible training, let God's word minister to you. And then when sharing God's word with others, Allow the Holy Spirit to remind you to connect with them in light of personal experiences that God has taken you through. And then pray as God ministers through you to others. As for the white gloves, especially now, we're wearing gloves and masks. And not just for our own protection, but for the protection, the safety, and well-being of others. For the communion set, when worship is more available in person, you'll use the white gloves and the elements of this communion set to serve communion with members who are unable to attend. Let the communion set bless you to connect with members in a personable and predictable way. We're providing you with contact cards to share with people because each card confirms that you are accessible. Be sure to give cards out, but then be sincere about reaching back out to those who contact you. The last item is a certificate of ordination. Your ordination certificate is going to be signed by our pastor and by the chair of our deacon board. Let that certificate remind you that you're being ordained to support our pastor and the leadership of this great church as we all seek to do what is pleasing to our God, spreading the good news about Jesus Christ wherever we are. And now back to that deacon badge that you've been waiting for. Training team, please distribute these deacon badges. Earlier, we mentioned that this name badge symbolizes that the initial training is over, that others would know of your availability by name, and that it should encourage you as you serve others to get to know them by their name. And now, as a result of COVID protocols, it is time for you to pin this deacon badge in light of all that it symbolizes on yourself. You may do so now and praise the name of Jesus. And finally, dear God, we pray your bountiful blessings over these tools to be used by our newest deacons of Alpha Street Baptist Church. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Woo. Praise the Lord. We are so excited to share with you in this moment and offering praise and glory and honor to our God for this special ordination service. It is our great joy to introduce your families. So when I call your name, please stand and then your family and friends may stand as well. We know that they've been on this journey with you. They have loved you and supported you and prayed with you and prayed for you. And so we, we know we want to share in this moment. They want to share in this moment with you. So James C. Carroll III, Deacon James C. Carroll III, and his family and friends, please stand. Thank you. James Edwards Clements, Jr., and his family and friends. Thank you. Jimmy L. Edwards, Jr., and his family and friends. Thank you. Allison Marie Hilliard, friends. And Deacon Bernard Jackson and his family and friends. Praise God. I can't help but say this, Alfred Street, you're beautiful and much more beautiful because of the 11 of you. God bless your hearts. Hope Ellen Kent. Jacqueline Marie Parham. Lorraine Natasha Phelps. Wanda A. Smith. Aaron Robert Watson. Pastor, I meant to ask you, could I do this? There's one more left. She was two years old when I left home to go to college. Her father was my homeroom school teacher and a steward in the church that my grandmother founded. And that is Karen Gibson Jenkins and all of St. Paul AME, they're watching together as a big family. Indeed, it is good to be in the house of the Lord, to worship. We never want to take for granted that the fact that you're here with family and friends who are deacons means that all of us are covered in the blood of Christ. Our highest priority, our greatest gift that we offer is an invitation to new life in Jesus Christ. Protocol has changed how we open the doors of the church, but it doesn't stop us from opening the doors of the church. If by chance you are here tonight, you don't know what it means to be saved. You've never fallen on your knees and invited Christ into your heart and to your life. You're curious about this thing called Christianity and faith. We would love to share with you the joy of salvation in Jesus Christ and how much God loves you and how God proved that love unconditionally on the cross of Calvary. At the end of this service, although we'll be taking some photos and doing some things, There'll be some deacons down here, a matter of fact, 11 of whom can share with you the good news of Jesus Christ and welcome you into Alfred Street Baptist Church as a member. 
And they would love to say that you were their first one that they welcomed in this church family. So if you're here tonight, don't rush out, don't leave, don't run out. Come down and speak to someone and let them know that you have an interest in knowing more about faith in Jesus. And it will be our joy to open our arms, our hearts, and our church home to you. You don't even have to live in this area. If you desire to be part of this church family, we welcome you. If you're watching online tonight and you desire that same opportunity, all you've got to do is go out to our website. There's an opportunity out there for you just to fill in the blank with your name. And one of these deacons, one of these new deacons, may be the first ones to reach back out to you, to share with you how you become part of this amazing family of faith that we call Alfred Street Baptist Church. If you are glad to be in church tonight and you're just grateful to celebrate these new servants, would you help me honor God with praise and thanksgiving as we worship the Lord for all that God does and has done for us? As we prepare to dismiss, you may be seated. We do want to encourage you if you so desire to be a faithful steward of the blessings of God in your life as we render back from our hearts and our offering to the Lord. There's so many ways you can do that electronically. We are not allowed, we, we will not raise offering with the passing of a plate. But we'll let you know that you can go on our website, you can give electronically. There's so many different ways for you to sow into the body of Christ Jesus if you so desire. And we encourage you to be faithful to whatever God puts on your heart to do on this day. All things are in order. We're grateful for all of you who've joined in with us tonight continue to pray for us. We're looking forward to the day when we can do this on a regular basis again and welcome all of God's people back into this place. We pray God's covering upon all these new deacons. Uh, Deacon Grace, are all things in order? Are we all set? Our deacons are right. Well, y'all are deacons. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the diaconate. Let us all stand as we get ready to receive our benediction and our amen from our Kaya praise team. Help me thank God for these, our singers who blessed us in song on tonight. They all endured the protocol of testing repeatedly to make certain that they were negative so that while they were singing with their mask off, they wouldn't give none of us nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise be to the Lord our God. God, we thank you that you continue to see fit to use us in spite of us. That you call us to that which we are not worthy of, but we strive to be faithful over. For these 11 of your sons and daughters, we're grateful. Now, God, may we continue to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in this place as together we seek to serve you and make glorious the name of Jesus Christ. And now unto the Almighty, the All-Wise, the Eternal, the Sovereign, the Omnipotent God, who alone is Creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made His love perfectly known to us, and Jesus, who alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To that all-wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity, and the redeemed of the Lord who love the Lord and await His return said amen. social distancing and if you would refrain from coming right down to the altar we would like to take a picture with our deacons and with our new deacons and then we'll have an opportunity to greet family and friends go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you